the first seances in the White House uh, took place when Jane Pierce was there. Her husband was Franklin Pierce, and uh, their son died in a train accident on their way to Washington for his inauguration. And she actually was so heartbroken. She had spiritualists in the White House doing seances. Mary Lincoln would do the same thing later uh, when uh, her son Willie died in the White House, died of a disease. And there are diaries and letters from spiritualists that still exist that say that not only was Mary involved in the seances, but so was her husband, Abraham Lincoln, as well. Um, the first person that ever ran for president, or first woman to run for president, was a woman named Victoria Woodhull, um, who uh, did not do well. She couldn't even vote for herself <laughs> at that point in history, but she was a spiritualist medium. My favorite president, as far as ghosts go, American history, Harry Truman, who was absolutely convinced that the White House was haunted. He used to send letters home to his wife all the time, talking about how he would hear footsteps in the hallways and people knocking on his door. And during the time he was in the White House, they, they did a big renovation, so he had to move across the street for a bit. And when they were getting ready to reopen the White House, he, he actually took a big group of reporters on a tour to show them the work that had been done. And when they published their articles the next day, most of the stories that, that were in it weren't about the White House. They were about all the ghosts in the White House and how President Truman couldn't wait to get back so he could start ghost hunting again. I'm not making this up. It's all true. So. It seems like every major event in American history, from, from war to, to disasters, they all have a ghost story or two attached to them. Does America have certain famous ghosts? Like, who are America's most famous ghosts? I would put Abraham Lincoln on that list. I, I always say he's the most well-traveled ghost in American history because of all the places where he's supposed to haunt. From his tomb and where he was buried in Springfield to his home in Springfield to random places all over the country, the places that he stopped at once or places where, you know, Abraham Lincoln slept here. Well, apparently now his ghost does too because there's so many stories. Um, Fort Monroe in Virginia, he stayed there a couple times during the Civil War. People claim they've seen his ghost. Ford's Theater, his ghost is supposed to haunt there or the house across the street where he actually died. But if there's any place that he does haunt, we're, we're back to the White House again because it's Lincoln's ghost that everybody has seen. I mean, you know, we're talking presidents, politicians, people who, you know, um, gosh, Eisenhower, Teddy Roosevelt, um, Jackie Kennedy. I mean, there's just this long list of people. Um, you know, Truman always thought it was Lincoln that he heard walking around. Um, Winston Churchill, um, in December of 41, spent the night at the, at the White House, was there to meet with, uh, with FDR. And uh, he spent one night in the Lincoln bedroom, and the next day he asked to be moved to another room. He said that he was taking a bath, and he got out of the bathtub and was walking around the room naked looking for a towel. And he looked up and Abraham Lincoln was standing in front of him. And Churchill said, claims he said to Lincoln, Mr. President, I'm afraid you have me at a disadvantage. And then Lincoln smiled at him and disappeared. Yeah. Uh, Queen Wilhelmina of the Netherlands uh, spent the night in uh, the White House. She was there to speak to Congress, but she stayed. FDR was kind of backing her for political asylum, and she'd stayed there during FDR's presidency. And uh, the next night after her stay at a cocktail dinner, she told the president that she had fainted the night before. And the president asked her, what, what do you mean? And she said that at 2 o'clock in the morning, she'd heard a knock on her door, so she'd gotten up to answer it. And when she opened it, and she even said, I know you're not going to believe this, but Abraham Lincoln was standing in the hallway, and she said, and after that, everything went black, and I woke up on the floor. I mean, she had no idea that Lincoln had been this long-running ghost who'd been seen. So I, I put Lincoln pretty high on that list. What are some of the most haunted places in America? Um, places. I would say, I, on, on my list, I would put uh, the Gettysburg Battlefield near the top of my list. Um, well, actually, Gettysburg or Antietam, uh, both of them are, are well preserved and that may have something to do with it. But, you know, you're talking about places where thousands of people died in, in a one to three day period. And, you know, there's been a lot of history left behind there. And based on the sheer number of reports 
over the years, I honestly think that they would rank way up there as one of the most haunted places. Um, another one I would say is the Waverly Hills Sanatorium in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, it's an abandoned tuberculosis hospital built back in the 30s. Um, a lot of stories over it. I'm one of those guys who's a real stickler for making sure stories are accurate. I, I've been doing that for a long time. And while a lot of the stories are way out of control about how many people died there, there were still a lot. And it is a big, creepy, foreboding place. And it is the first place, well, probably the last place, at least that I know of, that I actually saw a ghost. Um, I actually saw a ghost at Waverly Hills. And that convinced me, uh huh, you know, I guess there is something to all these stories, you know, uh, but it, it did, it did frighten me. I, I'm not going to lie. I, uh, I was startled by it because I was walking down a hallway with a friend of mine, no electricity in the building. It's dark, but there's enough light to see. And a man in what looked like a doctor's coat just walked across the hallway quickly ahead of us. Now he looked so real that we thought someone had broken into the hospital. You know, because it was, it has, it's a real target for vandals and things. At least it was at the time. This was early 2000s. And um, so we went in to tell the guy he had to leave. And when we went into the room, he, he was gone. There was, the room was empty and there was no exit door other than the one we'd just come through. And uh, that's when I realized um, I've seen a ghost. Um, I've only ever seen one other one ever. Um, if there's more than that, I said, I don't know, but, um, but that definitely got my attention and I would definitely say it's a very haunted place. Um, the Limp Mansion in St. Louis, that's another one. Um, and that was just owned by a family who were millionaires. They had started a beer brewing empire in St. Louis, which was famous for that. I mean, that's where like Anheuser-Busch is based out of. But the Limp family and their beer, no one's heard of anymore because they went out of business at the start of Prohibition. But uh, but the Limps were, were, were this German-American family that you could kind of say were cursed. Um, one of the sons died, uh, followed by then the suicide of the patriarch of the family. Uh, later, his oldest son committed suicide. And then one of the daughters committed suicide. And then another son committed suicide, three of them in that house. And um, so I've spent a lot of time there at that place over the years vis visiting because it's always been pretty close. And um, I, yeah, it's it's by sheer number of reports. It's got a lot of them. Do the haunted places, do the most haunted places, do they seem to have something in common about them? Yeah, I think every one of them, uh, because I would also list places like Alcatraz or Eastern State Penitentiary, places like that, too. All of them have a lot of tragedy and a lot of death associated with them, you know, and, and, and it doesn't always have to be it doesn't always have to be oh, all these people died there. Um, I, I honestly think that most hauntings just, you know, chronicling them the way that I have for 31 years now. Um, I think that a lot of haunted places, it's, it's really just history. It's just an impression of the things that have taken place there that have left an impression behind.